Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Densply Serona, ticker X-Ray. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts about the valuation of this company and its business quality. Market cap is $6.2 billion. Enterprise value is $7.7 billion. So you have about $1.5 billion in net debt on this business. That's about 20% of the enterprise value. Healthcare equipment and supplies industry, which tends to be a pretty good industry, but I've seen some good and bad ones. We'll see when this one lays out. Out. So, Densely Serona designs, develops, man manufactures, distributes, and sells various dental products and technologies for a professional dental market worldwide. So, dental equipment, including treatment centers, imaging equipment, dental hand pieces, provides dental CAD and CAM products, um, have devices under the VPro brand, Sure Smile, Bite, and other implant products. Offers endodontic products, uh, materials, drills, fillers, sealers. Looks like some of these are kind of one-time use and some of them are multi-use. So various things into dental equipment. Gives a good overview there. Now return on invested capital chart. I really like these charts because it tells me a lot about the business in one quick look. I'm looking for 20 straight years of profits, but barring that, only one year of losses in the last 20 years. Unfortunately, this has three years of losses in the last 20 years. We can see they lost money in 2017, 2018, and 2020. That's a little high, so it's tilting me from high quality down into lower quality um, or average with those three losses so far. Now, what I do like about this business is they spend a lot of time with very, very stable year-to-year -year return on invested capital. From 2006, 12%, 14%, 14%, 12%, 10%, 7%. But look from 2011 through 2016. 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 6 relatively stable return on invested capital. That stability is very valuable because it allows you to predict out into the future a lot more. Um, although the last five years have been very unpredictable. So three years of losses in the last five years. The two years of profits aren't even as good as the previous 10 years that bottomed at 6.5%. The current max is at 5.7%. So you can see there's clearly a gap here between recent performance and the performance of the previous decade or two. And so this does not look like much of an investable company. This is a lot more of an investable company. So you need to get some idea when you invest in this kind of what the future is going to be like as your second step. Now, key statistics, 10-year median returns. These returns are pretty low. 6% return on invested capital, 8% return on equity. I'd really like to see 15% on the return on equity line and 10% on the return on invested capital line. So we're a little low. So this is again tilting me from a high quality look to say this is more of an average to low quality business because they're not really earning the returns needed to allow me to get double digit returns on my investment in the future. Next thing up is the PE is actually quite high. An average PE over the last 100 years for the S&P 500 company is about a PE of 15. This PE is 17. So we're paying an above average price for a below average company. That's not what we want. We want it to be flipped. We want to buy a, an above average company for a below average price where I could get the stock at somewhere at a PE of 10 to 15 starts to get interesting. PE of 17 is a little high. So I'm starting with the mindset right now. This is an overvalued company that's a little relatively lower quality. Now, one of the things that we see in this return on invested capital chart is declining returns over time. You start at 14% in 2007, it gets down to 6% in 2016. So it's relatively been declining and that's true even over the last five years. One of the reasons for that is your assets are growing faster than revenue. Assets are growing faster than free cash flow. Assets are growing faster than EPS. This is going to drive your returns lower and lower and lower the longer time goes on. You don't want to sustain higher asset growth because it means your returns get worse and worse over time. That is what we're seeing here. What's interesting about this is they have relatively good gross profits, 53%. So I don't understand why the overall performance is so low considering the gross profits are above that 50% line that I like to see. Um, you can see, although gross profit margins are relatively stable, they've lost that stability over the last four years, and that's really destroyed the stability of the operating margin, making it very difficult to predict the future of this business. But you can tell the whole story of the performance of the stock simply by looking at EPS in 2012, $2.18, EPS in 2021, $1.91. You spent a whole decade, and you've gone nowhere. You've not gone up at all in an entire decade. This is a recipe for disaster as an investor. You don't want to invest in companies that have 10 straight years where you aren't making progress. There's just 
Not only do that have that, you have two years in a row of losses that were quite high, 2017 and 2018. You've lost $11 per share in those two years. And yet over the other years, you've hardly made $11 per share over the previous five years. So you basically net out, you know, three or $4 per share. Let's call it $4 per share over the previous decade is your profits. $4 per share over the previous decade, which means if you sustain that, then you are currently trading for like six times the previous decade's earnings. The previous decade's earnings, not the previous year's earnings. That's equivalent to like a PE of 60 if you really make sense of what you're talking about here. So you really, are on a normalized basis, this company is extremely overvalued. It looks like a poor quality company, but we're, we'll dive in a little bit more to get a tr- to get a better tune by looking at the income statement and balance sheet. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We do cover some really fun, interesting companies. And at the end of this video, I have a link to a playlist where I've covered 130 S&P 500 companies already. So stay tuned for that. Now on the income statement, you can see that although you have been not growing your earnings per share, I mean, you've grown your gross profit a little bit. But you've also grown your sales, you know, SG&A. So you've grown this by 20%, grown that by 20%. Okay. So operating profits actually up 50% over the last decade. That's pretty good. Um, but net income is not up that much. But here's the problem. Your net income is up 30%. But show are your shares outstanding. Your shares outstanding are up more than 30%. So you've been diluted in, over this time. Not only are you not, like, this is a disaster. You've been able to grow some. And all of this money has been given away to dilution. And that's just devastating for you as a shareholder because this dilution is killing you. And it looks like you had a big jump in dilution, 2015, 2016. Let's see if we that's an acquisition, perhaps. Um, yeah, so you have a big acquisition here in Goodwill. They acquired $4 billion worth of Goodwill over the course of that year. And that acquisition led to nothing. Look at this. You made this giant acquisition and all you got from it were losses. It's just a disaster. Um, absolute disaster. Uh, so I'd be really concerned if the same people running the company are the ones that acquired that company. It doesn't look good for them um, because not only did they have to pay some cash outstanding, they also diluted you and it just ended up to a really bad setup here. You do have stock-based compensation for a dental company. Don't really know why you need that on a dental company. Um, Okay, I, I mean, I can't recommend this company. Densply Serona, ticker X-Ray. For me, it's an avoided company. Um, it's not going to go on my watch list. I think it's extremely overvalued when you think about the fact that they're trading six times what they earned over the entire decade. What that means is that they need to probably trade for six decades at this price for you to get your money back. It's not going to be good if you hold this company for the long term based upon what I'm seeing here. And maybe there's a, the future is going to be different than the past, but the past doesn't look any good. Um, so for me, I'm avoiding this. won't go on my watch list. It's both a low quality company at a high valuation. So that's a pass for me. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. At the top of the end of the video, of course, we'll have the playlist to the 130 SP 500 companies I've already covered. We're going A through Z. We're already up to D. So everything A, B, and C has already been covered. We're working through the companies. I hope you'll stay tuned and be subscribed as I get through the entire rest of the index. Now, if you like this type of analysis, if you want to study stocks in five to 10 minutes or less, you can use quickfs.net. This is the software I'm using today. The affiliate link that I have is the first link in the description below. Use that affiliate link to support this channel because if you sign up through that affiliate link, either for a free or a paid account, then I get credit for sending you over to them. And I would really appreciate your support in doing so. This is the software I use for myself. I don't recommend anything I don't use myself. And I find this very helpful for studying companies in a very short period of time. So thank you for listening. Until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.